It's Winter Picks Dinner. Disney Springs, the sequel. Hey there, ma'am fam. We are here at Disney Springs for another round of Winter Picks Dinner. We played our very first game of Winter Picks Dinner here at Disney Springs over a year ago, and there are so many places to eat and drink that we're back for another episode. Really, there's just so much food that I want to eat so badly. But there's a caveat. Because we've already played here, all five locations that we ate and drank at in the first episode are off the table, which means for any course, we cannot visit Jock Lindsay's Hangar Bar, Haleo, Homecoming, Polite Pig, and... Salt and straw. Yeah, no, no delicious ice creams for us. Well, why did we do? What? No, no thigh high chicken biscuits. There are just so many other options, That's and true. they deserve to be showcased. That's true. So I'm hungry. I'm hungry. Let's get to it. Now, for those of you new here, Winter Picks Dinner is where we have a multi-course dinner where each course is decided by the winner of a game of rock, paper, scissors. For today's meal, we'll be having drinks, appetizers, entrees, desserts, and drinks again. And as always, we cannot repeat the same place twice. And as Molly mentioned earlier, we can't go back to the restaurants that we have visited here on our first visit to Disney Springs for Winter Picks Dinner. So there's some strategery to be had. It's been a minute since we have done this. Yeah, I'm trying to stretch. See, I hurt my wrist at the gym, so I'm hampered by injury today. Hopefully this plays to my advantage because I lost badly last time we played at Disney Springs. It's okay, listen, mathematically your time is coming. All right, ready? First drinks. Math magically. All right, first hundred drinks. On shoot, right? Yep. Ready? Yep. Rock, Rock paper, paper, scissors, shoot. Bonk. I pick drinks. Ow, my wrist. Stay shopping. <laughs> All right, you have won the first game. Drinks. Boy, is it a bummer that we can't do polite pick. Um, all right, so my immediate thought is something like Frontera Cocina because they have really, really good beverages, but they also have really good apps. Wine Bar George has better food, and I want that for an entree. I want to manifest Wine Bar George food. I understand and appreciate that. We got like Boathouse, but no, like other than the specialty beers, I think I'm actually just like staring at the answer. We're just going to go to Hole in the Wall. The Hole in the Ball Bar is the outdoor bar section of Raglan Road where they offer beer, liquor, and cocktails. And they even have happy hour. And I'm excited because, you know what? I don't think we've actually ever been here in a video. I don't think I've been here for years. It's It's been since a St. Patty's Day. Ah, uh, oh, St. <laughs> Patty's Day. Yeah, so let's go celebrate Granda. Granda. And the uh, Ryan Merriman clan. <laughs> we shall. <laughs> The Hole in the Wall pub is seated squarely in the center of the Raglan Road district and is an Irish pub that has access to the full menu from Raglan Road or if you'd like to, you can order from the quick service option Cooks of Dublin that can be delivered out to your table here. They offer a wide variety of beers and whiskeys, but they do have a full bar and during their happy hour, you can find some of their beers and cocktails on that menu as well. Our beverages have arrived. We have both opted for a flight, so put your tray tables in the full and upright and locked position. I picked up the Raglan Road Signature Collection with a Blooms Day Ale by Orange Blossom Brewery. The Try Wishes by Crooked Can. Now this is a red ale and we learned from the lovely bartender here that Raglan Road actually sent Crooked Can to Ireland to learn how to make a proper Irish red, which is very cool. Then the Florida Unfiltered by Brew Hub. This is Raglan Road's interpretation in cooperation with Brew Hub of a blue moon. And last but certainly not least, we have Cider State by Keel Farms, which is a watermelon and lime cider. Interesting point of fact, all of these beers are made specifically for Raglan Road by these local breweries, which is very cool. And I went for the Four Provinces flight, which is a nod to the fact that there are four provinces in Ireland. We've got a classic Guinness right here, then Smithwick's, Harp, and Kilkenny, and the lovely bartender told me to drink them in this order because that's the way the chefs at Raglan recommend it. Our sweet bartender brought us a bunch of their coasters. They've all got different Irish sayings on them, but on the back they all have the same one, which is slunch. Slunch? Slunch. Slunch, which is cheers in Irish. And so. if we're butchering that, my sincerest apologies, but we are trying. So. Sorry to our Irish friends. And please feel free to correct us, but. We'll, we'll read it later. I do my best. Rapid fire beer review. Ready, slunch. 
that is Guinness and it tastes like Guinness. This is about how much Guinness I can drink because it is so heavy, but it is just a nice, dark, crisp, caramelly, classic Irish beer. This beer is the whole orange and nothing but the orange. It is very, very citrusy on the back end, but on the front end it starts with pine taste. A little bit like, almost kind of like the pith of the orange itself is in there. It's so delicious. That's delightful. Very refreshing. A little bit harsher on the palate, but just really, really, really good. That's, that's right up my alley. That's fantastic. Smithwick's is an Irish red ale, which I believe you're also doing the... The, the Crooked Kins yeah. version of a red ale. I'd be curious to compare. This tastes a lot like uh, toffee, a little malty, caramelly, and like honestly a little bit like butter toast on the back end. Yours is a little bit lighter than the Smithwick's. This one's just a little bit heavier, very similar flavor profile, More but malty, this one's yeah. a little maltier, a little heavier. I actually think I like the Smithwick's better. But a valiant effort from the Crooked Can. That's Harp, which is a lager. It's a very classic style lager. I've had it a million times before because if you get my favorite drink, the Snake Bite over at the Rosen Crown at Epcot, this is the base that they mix with the cider. It's just what I think of beer. This is what I think of. Very crisp, light, easy drinking, classic lager. I heard that this was a take on a Blue Moon. It's filtered as opposed to Blue Moon being unfiltered. That tastes like a, a lighter Blue Moon, a little citrusy, and it's almost as like champagne-y type notes too. That's it's really problem. good. That's fantastic. My problem with Blue Moon is I love the flavor, but it's too heavy if you're like on a hot day. And this is nice and light and crisp. Oh, so and not nice. as orangey, it's not as sweet. That's yeah. fantastic. Oh, that. Woo! Woo! Well, that's a switch up on the flavor profile. For being a cream ale, this is not as sweet as I thought it would be or as heavy as I thought it would be. I don't know, I hear cream ale and I think cream soda, even though I know that's incorrect. I think of the four that I have, the Harp is my favorite, which is probably no surprise, followed by the uh, Smithwick's Red. That watermelon and lime ale starts off really sweet with the watermelon flavor and then ends a little Ooh. sour with the lime. It it's like it, a Jolly Rancher. It threw me for a loop. Yes, it's very much like a Jolly Rancher. It's a good cider. It's definitely sweeter than I yeah. would prefer to drink bevies. Oh, oh yeah. I think this is a really cool concept. Being able to take both beers from <laughs> Ireland as well as beers that are made specifically for Raglan Road and you can't find them anywhere else is such a neat way to experiment and try these new things. I love it. Plus, I love that they have happy hour here. They've got good deals. It feels like this place is pretty underrated and the food is really good at both Cooks and at Raglan itself, the fish and chips are great. The bread pudding is to die for, so a good spot to come grab some grub and a beer. Slush. Okay, round one is in the books. I think that was fun. That was delicious beer. It's fun to do a flight. I'm no complaints for me besides my loss. You know, I miss Winter Pick Center because the best part is no matter who wins, we get good food and drink. It's spoken like a winner. You got this. Are you ready? Yes. Sure. Yes. On shoot. Apps. I got. I got. I got apps. I'm dreaming of. So. I'm dreaming of. All right, ready. They're cheese based. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Rock, Rock paper, paper scissors, scissors shoot. Good job. Okay. What are you thinking? I am now at a crossroads of cheese, and um, it's because I either want to go to Wine Bar George and get like fire cheese or mac and cheese bites or a couple of their small plates, or I want to go right there to Frontera Cocina and get their amazing queso, maybe some guacamole. I'm going to go Wine Bar George, and that's because Frontera Cocina also has really good entree, so if I happen to win the entree round, I'll have that as a good option, whereas Wine Bar George, my favorite things there are the small plates, which are more appetizer. Headed to Wine Bar George. I've, I've got my eye on this Gideon's cookie line here. They haven't gone to a mobile line yet, because that's, you know, something to consider for dessert, but it usually requires some pre-planning where you have to get in a virtual queue. <laughs> but anyway, we are headed to Wine Bar George right here. This is one of my favorite restaurants in all of Walt Disney World. It is brought to you by Master Sommelier George Militotes, and it as the name would suggest, has an incredible wine selection, hundreds of different wines by the glass, by the ounce, by the bottle, but they also have amazing food and it's right up my alley. It's charcuterie boards and little small plates. They're known for their meatballs and their mac and cheese bites. And while they do take reservations and I highly recommend them, especially for brunch, which is amazing, they also often have spots at the bar and it's not super busy today, so I'm hoping we can get in. Oh my gosh, Alan, Alan. Oh my gosh, my dreams are coming true. Pumpkin fritters on the menu with a brown butter aioli. 
Oh yeah, that looks good. The weekday lunch menu at Wine Bar George features a variety of small plates of which we have ordered three for our appetizer. They also do some of their signature boards, a cheese board, a meat board, or the big board, which is a combination and fantastic. We had that in our charcuterie video, it was amazing. They also do a couple of different sandwiches for your lunchtime, things like a chicken salad sandwich, a snapper sandwich, a French dip, and then they do have some of their family style plates like the skirt steak. But for me, my favorite thing about eating at Wine Bar George is the small plates, including this one that I've never had before. It's a newer addition to the menu, but it's pumpkin fritters with a bacon brown butter aioli and some sage on top. And it looks and smells delicious. We also have the crispy mac and cheese bites that arrived with tomato nage and pecorino. And last, but certainly not least, our Saganaki on fire arrived, which is a Blahatori cheese, which is a Greek cheese. It's coated in Mektaxa, which is a liqueur, lit on fire, and then put the fire out with a lemon, some crostini on the side. This is my dream come true, right here. First up, pumpkin. As the resident lover of pumpkin, pumpkin is usually made sweet. It's usually part of a dessert and it's so fun to have it served savory. It's slightly naturally sweet from the pumpkin, but then you've got that brown butter and the sage. Delightful. The closest thing I can compare it to is it's almost like a pumpkin hush puppy, mm -hmm. but with a much better sauce. Mm -hmm. Now for the mac and cheese. Cheers. There's always a concern when you cook pasta twice, right, both boiling it and then frying it, that it's gonna be overcooked. That's not the case here. It's still perfectly cooked. A little bit of spice coming through. Almost like a little bit of a red pepper. <clears throat> Fried beautifully, crispy, and then the tomato sauce. It's just a brilliant counterpoint. A little bit acidic to counterpoint all of the creamy richness of the macaroni and cheese. They're perfect every time. Mm. They're cheesy and decadent, but they're not overly so. They're not overly dense. They're light somehow. Like, I don't know how they do it. They're, they're wizards in the kitchen here. Oh, also, George brought us our food. What a treasure of a human being. Like, we walked in and he was cleaning the bar, and then he actually is running tables now. Like, if you've ever wanted to go, like, this man's a master small unit. There's less than 300 of them in the world, and he's running tables at his own restaurant because he's a king. And now the Saganac on fire, which I can best describe as, like, you know when you bake something that has cheese, and then some of the cheese falls off and it gets all crispy, crunchy on the baking sheet? I do know that. It's like this, but the whole dish is that. The cheese itself is nutty, and then you've got the little bit of acidity and citrus from the lemon that was squeezed on top, richness from the brandy, and it's just cheese, but it's so much better than that. It is a bit of a, um, a stronger flavor of cheese than I think a lot of folks might expect. It is uh, akin to a strong goat cheese in terms of like the flavor profile, but it's harder, mm -hmm. a little bit spongier. So very tasty though. Um, that's just like a perfect marriage of flavors, I think, inside of that dish. Why, Mar George? I cannot recommend it enough. And a meal made of cheese and pumpkin. This is this is girl dinner, Molly edition right here. It's a lot of birds. There are so many birds right here. It's very alarming. Anyway, finished up a fantastic course at Weimar George. I just love that restaurant enough. I cannot give it enough flowers for the fact that, like. The service is always incredible there, and I think that stems from the fact that George, the owner of the restaurant, like I said, was literally like wiping down the bar and running tables. It's just, I've never had anything less than a stellar experience at Wine Bar George, and that comes from like service, to the food quality, to the quality of beverages that you're going to get. It's just hands down a fantastic experience, I think. Anybody who's visiting Disney Springs, you don't have to enjoy alcohol, but if you enjoy food and good service, Wine Bar George is the place to check out. All right, entrees now. I'm very full, so that's gonna change my plan if I win, but let's figure out who wins first. All righty. I'm sort of straddling a, a handrail here. I just... Disney Springs background music is so weird. Like, it's like... It's weird, but it's also... They have a great YouTube montage of it that I might put on in the background as I work. It's just such a unique mix. Like, it's very distinct. Yeah. You ready? Yes. Here we go, everybody. <sighs> All right. I'm ready, are you? I'm ready. Let's go. Rock, Rock paper, paper, scissors, shoot. shoot. Interesting. Wow. Rock, Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Wow. Wow. Three for three. Rock, Rock paper, scissors, shoot. shoot. 
Interesting. All right. Still keeping it up, okay, right? Yeah. Ready? Rock, Rock paper, paper, scissors, shoot. Boop. I'm going to pick the Andre. <laughs> I thought you were going to pick paper because we've been doing rock so many times, and then I was like, I'm going to get you. That didn't work. It was a good thought. Okay. I am also quite full. So I want something light, like a light sandwich or a salad for the entree. Now, I was originally thinking something like Frontera Cocina, but I've seen the size of those entrees. They're a little larger. Delicious. Very, very tasty food, but a little bit sizable for how I'm feeling. And originally I was going to pick Pepe if I want entrees, and I did, of course. Um, but again, those are massive serving sizes. I'm sorry that we ordered three delicious plates from Wine Bar George. Let me tell you, our appetizer for, was an appetizer. I'm not sorry, because it was delicious. Listen, it was a delectable treat, so I'm not mad about it. I think what we're going to do, though, is throw it back to, like, our college program days. Oh, no. <laughs> we're going to go on a Are throwback. Are we going to play in a Hollywood? Oh, no, 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 not that far back. No, we're going to Earl's Sandwich. Oh! Yeah, they have white stuff. Imagine, if you will, for a moment. Alan, I'm so sorry. Yeah, I, what? I know you're about to tell us about back in the day. I am. But I need to focus on this. Oh, do we have to? Yeah. Peanut how do dogs? Feel, how do you feel about these peanut dogs with Fafarelli pasta bows? Uh, well, they're staring into my soul. They're unblinking eyes. What are they? Atop their goober heads. Are their eyes Cheerios? I think that, I think, I don't know. And I'm not, I'm not willing to assess it much further, if I'm honest. This honestly looks like a child's arts and craft project. Maybe that's what it's supposed to look like. And if that's the case, you did great. They crushed it. If that was the idea, was child's arts and crafts. This is featured in a Nailed It episode. They absolutely crushed. They might be bagels? Yes, because touching the hard ceramic is going to give you insight into the food it is made by. Imagine, if you will, for a moment, a world where Disney Springs didn't exist. Instead, there was a land known as Downtown Disney. And Downtown Disney didn't feature nearly the stalwart culinary offerings that Disney Springs does. You had your Rainforest Cafe, you had your T-Rex Cafe, you had Planet Hollywood, and then, of course, the classic Earl of Sandwich. And this spot, after a long week of work as a cast member, was a place where you'd gather with your friends and enjoy the, at the time, available sandwich, the Caribbean Jerk Sandwich. It's, it's gone now. Some of you would also enjoy the, the Holiday Sandwich. Just the Montague. What a time to be alive, really. There's one that's got a pineapple on it. Ah, uh -huh, yes. Ah, <sighs> memories. Anyway, we're going back there. Well, while I was going and ordering our delicious eats. I learned a lot about sandwiches because there's a historical room here at the Earl of Sandwich with tons of fun facts. Now, the Earl of Sandwich is named after the fourth Earl of Sandwich, Sandwich being a town in the United Kingdom. And he was a, a sea captain. A sea, oh. He was appointed to, when he was appointed to the Navy. I thought it was and, the Caribbean jerk sandwich. He sailed. Well, he's British, but yeah. Well, you went to the Caribbean and he's like, wow, this is, these are flavors and spices. Exactly, and his name was John Montague, which is why one of them is called the Full Montague. Oh, and John Montague was said to be quite the card shark. And between playing all his cards and sailing the sea, he very, very rarely had time for a meal. So he put salted beef in between two pieces of toast. That way he could eat and battle or play cards thus inventing the sandwich. So you're you're here to tell me, you're yeah. suggesting. I'm not suggesting, I know. That John Montague yeah. would go into battle. Yeah. And he would just be wielding a sword He'd and be a like, beef sandwich. On guard, nom nom nom. Ruthlessly efficient. Ruthlessly efficient. And now the current Earl of Sandwich, the 11th Earl of Sandwich, the honorary John Edward Hollister Montague, no association with the clothing store, probably no Montague, invented and opened Earl They're of Sandwich. direct descendants of the man who made the suit. Uh, I would learn so much today. Yeah, Disneyland Paris. Wow. Here you can find a very quick bite. Sandwiches, salads, wraps. I picked up myself the Chipotle chicken and avocado Ooh, that's a good sandwich. one. That's a good one. I went for the caprese salad. So it's everything you love about a caprese, but in an actual salad fashion, as opposed to like an appetizer. So it's got tomatoes, mozzarella, balsamic, uh, basil, and lettuce. And it's a blustery day here. 
so all of our food is being blown away. Cheers. Cheers. You know, it's a quick and light sandwich. It tastes like 11 years ago. Yeah, I've immediately thrust back to my college program days. Yep. The balsamic glaze they put on that is, I got too much of it on the first bite, it attacked me. It was a little sweet, but sparingly it's good and there's a bunch of cheese, fresh tomatoes, and they did give me balsamic vinaigrette too, if I want to add that. Hmm. This sandwich is filled with a lot of chicken, a whole host of cheese, bacon, some chipotle sauce, which is a little bit like a chipotle barbecue, so it's not actually super spicy, it's a little smoky and sweet. And then of course, some avocado. I mean, it's, it is a fine sandwich. I think if you're looking for a quick, light bite to eat in Disney Springs when you don't want to maybe sit down and have a longer dining experience, nothing wrong with a little sandwich. Also for your pickier eaters in your party. I mean, it was still packed. It's packed pretty much all the time. Um, yeah, I think there's much more interesting food. There's more unique food in Disney Springs, but Earl's Sandwich is a classic, and I agree. Sometimes you just want a, a salad or a sandwich and not a whole dinner experience. You just want to grab something, and Earl's Sandwich is a solid choice. I haven't been here forever. This is a nice little burger. I think the last time we went to Earl's Sandwich, in fact, the last two times, we were in Disneyland. Well, it's because their downtown Disney wasn't revamped either. This used to be the land of, like, pretty mediocre food and early sandwich which was the shining beacon. Yeah. I did also go to the Wolfgang Puck Quick Service restaurant a lot, which was over that way. I did too, but they had a lot of pine nuts. Yeah. I think that's the one being replaced by Eat, the Indian restaurant coming, which I'm really excited about. Oh my gosh. I think that's the space where that's happening. No, I'm sorry, it was back there. I'm confused. Oh. Um, but that restaurant looks awesome. Can't wait to try that. Anyway, we're going to enjoy 2012. Mm -hmm. All right. Oh. Nice light entree in my belly. Could go for something sweet to tap it off. To tap it off? Cap it off. I said cap it off. We, No one heard that. No, you said cap it off. I just misheard you. Correct. Yeah. Are you ready? Yeah. I have some treats in mind. Good. I'm excited. Yeah. Ready? Yeah. Rock, Rock paper, scissors, scissors, shoot. Wow. Again? Really? Interesting. Goodness. Interesting. This is going to be a wild time. All right. Ready? Rock, Rock paper, scissors, scissors, shoot. Boop. <laughs> It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> My streak is over. I was doing well at Animal Kingdom, and now it's back to this. <laughs> now, the best part about Disney Springs is that there are tons of places to get a sweet treat. You have Gooby's Candy Company, Ghirardelli. If I wanted to be really mean, I could pick Everglazed and get some donuts. That's rude. I'm not going to do that, though. I think the obvious answer, and the one that I want, is to go to Gideon's and get a cookie and a cold brew. That is the correct answer, and it will taste delicious, but slightly less sweet since it's your victory. But a Gideon's cookie is a Gideon's cookie. Also, I need to practice. I need to eat some more cookies for my own, like, mental log for how to make them. Quick yet incredibly important pit stop on the way to Gideon's, though. It's at the PhotoPass studio because they have amazing and very realistic magic shots you can do with a variety of incredible backgrounds. It gives Olin Mills vibes and we need some holiday shots. Nothing like a whimsical trip to the PhotoPass gallery. You can take pictures and if you've already paid for PhotoPass either with your ticket or your annual pass, they're included and, and they are truly a gift. Arrived at Gideon's and the line's about 45 minutes to an hour. And while Gideon's is delicious, I don't know if I want to wait an hour for it. And on our walk over here, I remember that Vivoli's gelato is a thing. So we're going to go there. It's one of the most underrated spots in Disney Springs, and I'm feeling some gelato. Vivoli Il Gelato is straight out of Florence, Italy, where they opened their shop in the 1920s, serving up delicious treats like gelato, tiramisu, cannolis and other Italian specialties. There are only a few locations outside of Italy in the whole world. There's one in New York. This is the second U.S. location ever opened. And I agree with Alan that it is incredibly underrated when you've got heavy hitter dessert shops in Disney Springs like Salt and Straw, like Gideon's. But every time I've been here, the treats have been delicious and I'm excited to have some gelato now. Gelato acquired and rapidly melting. What'd well, you get? I got one scoop of the strawberry sorbet and one scoop of the cookies and cream gelato. And I got two scoops of peppermint cheesecake, two of my favorite things. 
You know, for a cheesecake, I thought it'd be super heavy, but it's actually really light. A lot of candy cane presents. The cookies and cream is smoother than I would say probably most ice cream is as far as like there's not big chunks of Oreo, but it's got that Oreo flavor. It is lighter than I think ice cream is. And then the strawberry sorbet is just light and fresh and not artificial. So if you're a fan of the iconic passion fruit orange guava juice that they have around Disney, they've got a sorbet version in here. So good. I didn't think it could be a cheesecake ice cream dessert, or I'm sorry, gelato, and have it be light. But this is so light, but you can tell cream. You can tell it's cheesecake. I love Gideon's. I love salt and straw, but there's something really nice about just a little scoop of gelato sitting outside, no line. Yeah. Good choice. Okay, last round. The gelato's really tasty. Now it's for, you good? Just looking at my hand and how disappointing. You almost caught a leaf. I almost caught a leaf, that was wild. Now it is time for some after dessert beverages. They're not in short supply. Ready? I'm going left handed. Don't let me down, lefty. Okay. Are you going left handed too? Sure, solidarity sister. All right. Ready? Yeah. All right. Ready? Yeah. On shoot. Yeah. Rock, Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. shoot. Oh, wow. Nice. Can we stop this? I mean, we can. Ready? Ready? Rock, Rock paper, scissors, shoot. Oh, intriguing. Are you ready? Uh-huh. Rock, Rock, paper, scissors, scissors shoot. shoot. Boop. I'm going to pick the drinks. Mm, lefty. I also want you to know something. Yeah? That I have thrown Rock literally every round until the last two rounds. I don't... Keep track of these things. Literally every round I threw rock. I didn't, I threw only rock until the last two rounds. I had to try to turn the game up to win. Well, at least I got one. Good job. So, behind the scenes fun fact. I went to watch, skip through last spring's video to make sure I knew which restaurants we went to. There were comments that were like, I love how it just turned into Alan picks the meal at <laughs> Disney Springs, and here we are again. Honestly, my only sadness now is that I didn't get, I didn't pick Pepe, but it was good to revisit 2012 like that. So, <laughs> um, as far as beverages go, Disney Springs has a variety of options. Again, I'm bummed that Polite Pig is out of the picture. I'm also bummed that Jack Lindsay's Hangar Bar is out of the picture right here. And I took Wine Bar George. And Wine Bar George has gone too. And Homecoming. And Homecoming. <laughs> wow, we're really narrowing them down a little bit. In terms of beverages, you have places like Splitsville, close by City Works. But I've already had beer. I'm really craving a cocktail. Um, Frontera Cocina. But I don't know if I want a margarita or something tequila based right now. The Edison. The Edison's right on the corner and they have an incredible old fashioned. And I know you like those two malls, so. Let's do a win for both of us. We'll go get old fashioned at the end. To be clear, I am not a winner. I am a loser. Wow, that's a throwback. Loser. 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 The her. The Edison is, as the name would suggest, themed after electricity and Thomas Edison, but it represents itself in a very industrial and steampunky type vibe. It's filled with a variety of eats, treats, and drinks. We're gonna go sample the latter of that. And it also includes a hidden tunnel to Enzo's hideaway, which is the speakeasy of Maria and Enzo's, where Enzo has sort of gathered his own special variety and menu there. And at 7 p.m. until 10 p.m. at the Edison, they do offer live entertainment. So these are musicians and singers who sing modern hits, but with a jazzy spin. Now I know I mentioned a secret tunnel. Uh, we're gonna try not to reveal it, but it's over this way past the restrooms on the left. But you didn't hear it from me. The food at the Edison is elevated American fare, so burgers and sandwiches. They are most well known for their clothesline bacon, but we are not here for that today. We are here to enjoy some of their libations. Now the Edison has a wide variety of cocktails ranging in all sorts of flavor profiles and prices. They've got some very fancy bottles on the wall which result in some pricey cocktails, but a lot of fun. Some of the cocktails include the Time Turner, which is made with 
uh, Campari, Santa Teresa 1796, the Samantha Sterling, which is a nod to an Adventurers Club character, which used to be here when there was Pleasure Island, which has got Grey Goose and Rose and Cinnamon Cordial. Also note the Samantha Sterling, as well as other cocktails on their list, can be actually turned into giant punch bowls, which serve several people if you want to get a big party going. But today we went for the patented old fashioned, which I know is very shocking to everyone. It's Basil Hayden bourbon with Angostura bitters and simple syrup. And then we asked if they could smoke it for us and they sure did. It was a very cool smoking gun and I'm very excited to try this. Looks like a really good classic old fashioned. Cheers. So smoky. Ooh. A little bit of that almond flavor on the back end as well because of how they make this particular old fashioned. It also definitely has bourbon in it, obviously, but it's not super, super boozy. It's not burning the back of my throat like sometimes old fashions do. It's very, very balanced. It's not too sweet. It's not too smoky. It's got hints of the smoke, though. It's a very good classic old fashioned. Good way to end Winter Picks Dinner, wouldn't you say? The bartender said it's an if it's not broke don't fix it cocktail and he was right. So cheers to you and your victory. Just rocks, you know? <sighs> Just rocks. Just rocks. New band name called it. I haven't been in the Edison in a long time and I forgot how much I enjoyed the vibe in that restaurant. It's just so nice. I it just checks all the boxes for me. Good drinks, good food, the ambiance, the music. Yeah, there's just so many places to eat and drink around Disney Springs that this doesn't crack my top list, but it's an enjoyable experience every time I go. Well, it was fun revisiting Disney Springs for Winter Picks Dinner Part 2. Probably more fun because you won, but I did get to eat a lot of delicious things, including a, a cheese and pumpkin course. So. Uh, well, was, Wine Bar George was stellar. There's really, I mean, there's just so many places to eat and drink around here that we could probably pay 10 rounds of Winter Picks Dinner here and never repeat places. That's true. So let us know what you'd like to see us do this next time. But until then, friends, be sure to like the video, subscribe if you are new, follow us on all of our socials. And if you want to join in the conversation about this or any of our other videos, join us on Discord. The links for all of that are down below. And until next time, friends, I'm Molly. And I'm Alan. And it has been magical. And delicious. So delicious, especially the cheese. Today is rocked.